Are you tired of people telling you to do more with less? I know I am. And it's a silly notion, right? We're all engineers here. We know the world is full of physical and mathematical constraints that just can't be broken. There's only so much energy in a gallon of gasoline. There are only so many hours in a day. And we can only keep using our student ID for so many years after. Wait, never mind that. <laughs> anyway, there are always some basic laws that limit our more for less efforts. When it comes to high performance computing, we need to get more work done with less energy. Our embedded vision system has to do an enormous amount of computing while running on batteries. But with conventional processors, that just can't be done. We need a way to break through those basic laws of computational efficiency. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. When we need more performance out of our embedded computing system and have to reduce power consumption at the same time, we need to turn to alternative hardware architectures. That's where the new generation of multiprocessing SOCs like Xilinx Zinc come in. My guest today is Eric Ma of Xilinx, and we're going to talk about getting way more processing done on way less power. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about the Zinc UltraScale Plus MP SoC. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So, Eric, the title says running out of processing power, no problem. But excuse me, isn't processing power always a problem? You're right, Amelia. Processing power is a real problem for many applications. With the challenges and high costs of transistor scaling, microprocessors are no longer making the leaps in performance we're used to. Embedded designers are finding themselves at processing power limits. Can we add more processors to get the performance we need? That's one way to do it. Let's see if we can apply that method to a few applications reaching the limits of processing power. Excellent. Products we use every day are becoming more capable and complex. Surveillance cameras used to be simple video capturing devices feeding to tape-based media. Right. They've evolved into complex sensors capable of capturing infrared images, night vision, and even have the ability to track movement in real time. As surveillance systems improve in video quality and capability, the processing bandwidth needed for real-time video will strain even systems with multiple processors. Okay, sure. The applications get fancier, but processing technology doesn't stand still either. They're always improving from generation and to generation, aren't they? That's true, but let's take a look at processing power from another angle. Okay, cool. In the past, portable intravenous delivery systems relied solely on gravity to function. Following advances in medicine, battery-powered infusion pumps were developed. Today, many patients need multiple IVs regulated by advanced control systems. Being portable and battery powered, we can't just add processor cores at will. High performance processors use a great deal of power, something we don't have in many applications. So if you can't throw more processors at the problem, what are we supposed to do? One thing we can do is to match the processing workload with the right type of engine. Let's take a look at Advanced Driver's Assistance Systems, or ADAS in short. Cars have come a long way in terms of safety features. Nowadays, most cars have backup cameras, while high-end vehicles come equipped with automated features like emergency braking and lane-keeping assistance. Self-driving cars are being tested, and it won't be long before they become commonplace. These advanced features are continually pushing the limits of embedded processing hardware. For functional safety, we need high reliability, requiring redundancy within a processing system to ensure proper operation. For advanced recognition systems, High bandwidth video processing is vital to identifying vehicles and pedestrians. For semi-autonomous features, real-time processing is required to provide rapid response. Each of these workloads are different and are best handled by different types of processors. Right. Current ADAS systems are a combination of different processor types, either implemented on a board or integrated into a system on chip or SOC. Okay. SOCs provide inherent performance advantages over discrete systems, and future ADAS systems will require integrated multiprocessor systems to meet performance demands. But come on, Eric, SOCs aren't exactly new. The concept of a whole system on a single device has been around for a while. Well, SOCs in and of themselves are common and well understood. 
but multi-processing SOCs are really the next step to getting us closer to our performance needs. This is because building in additional processor chips requires more power, and we can't forget about our power consumption limitations. As devices get smaller and more portable, lower power consumption is becoming a competitive requirement. If your design consumes less power, batteries last longer. That gives you better operation, less downtime, and prolonged battery health. So while performance requirements in embedded designs are increasing, power consumption limits are actually decreasing. So how far can multi-processing SOCs take us with these requirements? With a loose power budget, discrete multi-chip systems are fine. As power budgets decrease, multiple processors integrated into SOCs become a necessity. Okay. But now we've reached a point where increasing performance with more processors will push us out of our power budget. If we can't add more processors to our SOCs, what can we do? We go to hardware. By hardware, I mean programmable logic. There are certain real-time tasks, such as high-speed video processing or high-speed data sampling, which just can't be done on a software-driven processor. You need to have an FPGA to handle processing of that magnitude. FPGAs are capable of hardware-level performance, handling the most difficult processing requirements while using less power than a microprocessor. FPGAs allow you to offload compute-intensive tasks from your microprocessors, enabling a system performance increase unachievable by processors alone. Programmable logic will allow us to meet our performance to power thresholds. Wouldn't a custom designed ASIC do the same thing? Yes, but an ASIC doesn't give you the flexibility and future proofing of an FPGA. Oh, okay. An ASIC can only do the processing it was initially designed to do. If workloads change, the chip would have to be redesigned. Right. And that costs a lot. Programmable logic can be modified to changing processing needs. It can even be reprogrammed for different tasks when already deployed in the field, prolonging the life of the design. That's a good point, but FPGAs have been around for a long time. What's new about putting one in your embedded design? You're right. FPGAs have been a key component in many embedded designs for some time. But let's see if we can get even more out of our programmable logic. Let's take a look at a common ADAS configuration used today. Here, you see an FPGA combined with a microcontroller and DSP. Right. The three chips have to communicate with one another, creating both performance and power bottlenecks. As a result, you're not getting the most out of your FPGA. Right. On top of that, three chips incur extra cost and real estate, making it difficult to fit into smaller applications. Sure. We solved these problems with a chip customers have been putting in systems for a long time called the Zinc 7000. It combines dual ARM Cortex A9 processors with programmable logic in a single chip. Integrating these processing engines greatly simplifies the design and lowers bomb cost. But the best part of the integration is the performance increase. With an external FPGA, bandwidth between the programmable logic and processor is limited by the interface, whether it be PCIe, SPI, or a custom implementation. The Zinc 7000 has over 3,000 interconnects between the processing system and programmable logic, providing more bandwidth than you'll ever need. Basically, you've combined the benefits of an SOC with the benefits of an FPGA. That's correct. These combined advantages made the Zinc 7000 very successful in many embedded applications. However, we know that the bar for system performance is always rising. So we built on the success of the Zinc 7000 and developed a product that's a huge leap forward in terms of processing power. It's called the Zinc UltraScale Plus MPSOC, designed for applications in need of high processing power without the expense of high power usage. Let's take a look inside. First up is the Application Processing Unit, or APU, which is a multi-core ARM Cortex A53 setup. Okay. With up to four cores, this is your general purpose processor made to handle system operations and control. With low latency and rapid response needed for many real-time operations, we included dual ARM Cortex R5s. These real-time processors ensure your design gets the information it needs exactly when it needs it. The dual core setup also increases data reliability through an optional lockstep configuration. Almost all modern applications have some sort of graphical user interface. Sure. So we built a graphics processing unit into the Zinc UltraScale Plus. The ARM Mali 400 MP2 processor is optimized for high quality graphics at the lowest possible power consumption. The Mali 400 offloads display processing from the APU, using less power and freeing APU performance for more critical tasks. A hardened video codec capable of H.265 and H.264 standards is available. Offered as a solution to handle the increasing bandwidth of high resolution video, the video codec offloads compressing and decompressing functions from the processing system, making the Zinc UltraScale Plus optimal for multimedia applications. For the really heavy workloads, we go to the integrated programmable logic. 
16 nanometer FinFET fabric accelerates compute intensive functions up to 100 times faster compared to software implementations. Wow, okay. The programmable logic communicates with the processors through 6,000 interconnects, enabling bandwidth far beyond that of multi-chip solutions. Let the programmable logic do the heavy lifting to achieve higher system performance levels without the need for additional power-hungry processors. Wow, that's a lot of horsepower in one chip. It sure is, and every bit is needed for next-generation designs. So how do we get all this performance up and running? Embedded designers may not have much experience designing FPGAs. We've thought about that. We provide a proven embedded ecosystem developed with the Zinc 7000 that's built around familiar operating systems. To get the most out of the processing system, we offer Xilinx SDK, an Eclipse-based software development kit capable of creating embedded applications for multiprocessing designs. For Linux users, Peta Linux Tools offers everything necessary to customize, build, and deploy embedded Linux solutions on the Zinc Ultrascale Plus processing system. To tackle the programmable logic, we have a large library of pre-validated IP to jumpstart your project. Need accelerators for video processing or DSPs for wireless applications? We have the IP solutions to speed your development. If your design needs more customization, we have an innovative development environment called SDSOC. Implementing software functions to hardware used to be a monumental task. First, you had to figure out which code was best to move to hardware, then manually build the infrastructure in the programmable logic. Not anymore. SDSOC provides an embedded C and C++ programming experience for our SOCs. With a single click, the tool profiles your C code, isolates the most compute intensive portions, then automatically accelerates these functions in hardware. SDSOC saves you the time and hardware specific knowledge to accelerate tasks with programmable logic. Sounds like there's a tool for everything. That's the goal. We wanted to streamline the development process and help designers get their products to market as quickly as possible. So it looks like you've got a portfolio of SOCs now. That's right. The Zinc Ultrascale Plus is part of Xilinx's all-programmable SOC portfolio. From our first SOC, the Zinc 7000, to our latest Zinc Ultrascale Plus, we have the right combination of system performance and power needed for your next project. For those of you thinking of projects down the road, we're working on our next generation SOCs to meet the needs of future designs. Stay tuned. Looks like processing power isn't a problem after all. Not with the Zinc Ultrascale Plus. We've put together multiple processors to handle all types of workloads, combined them with integrated programmable hardware to cut through the really tough processing loads, then wrapped everything in a software-friendly development environment to simplify product development. The Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC is the best single-chip solution for next-generation embedded applications. To learn more, please visit www.xilinx.com SOC. There you can find product briefs for the Zinc Ultrascale Plus and Zinc 7000, as well as a white paper further explaining the performance advantages of the Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC. Well, thanks, Eric. I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Anytime. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find out more information about the Zinc Ultrascale Plus MPSOC. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out EE Journal's YouTube channel, keyword EE Journal, or the on-demand section on eejournal.com.